Greetings, everyone. My name is Mutiku Ayana. I'm the College Guidance Counselor at Labau International Academy. Our guidance department offers two distinct programs. The first one is college and university application, and the second one is a psychology program, which is offered by a psychology professor. We have five contents. Number one, guidance counseling class lessons from grade nine to 12. Two, complete guide to college and university application process. Third, proficiency tests, which are the SAT and TOEFL. Fourth, the value of extracurricular activities. And number five, the role of college guidance counselor. First, let's look at guidance counseling class lessons from grade nine to 12. The class objectives are the following. The first one is to provide counseling classes for all students. Number two, to prepare students in advance for college and university. Number three, to guide students in their future careers and endeavors. The lessons are organized through annual and weekly lesson plans. And lessons are divided into two categories. The first one is psychological and behavioral. Second one is college and university guidance counseling. Each grade level get two class periods each week, and most classes are interactive and student-centered. Students are graded based on class activities such as classwork, homework, and assignments. Let's take one example, which is managing feelings and emotions taken from grade nine. What are emotions and feelings? How do we acknowledge our emotions. How do we balance our emotions and attitudes? And how do we understand the complex ways of understanding our emotions? And for this class, we use various resources such as the internet and different psychology books. And in the class, students would do presentation as part of the class. Second example, as college and university types taken from grade 11. What are the differences between Ethiopian institutions and institutions abroad, such as countries in the USA, Canada, and Germany? And we pick the USA and focus on liberal arts college, community colleges, universities, and technical schools. And we'll talk about application requirements and institution difference in terms of acceptance rates, major and minor offerings, the campus size, and the facilities. And we'll discuss on Ivy League schools, which are located in the USA. And finally, we'll look at other emerging universities in Africa, Europe, Middle East, and the Asia Pacific. And the guidance council class Specifically, the college application is provided both to Ethiopian and college and universities abroad. For the abroad application, students start the process in grade 11. And they start the process by writing successive PSATs. Next, they register for SAT and TOEFL. They create common app account. They select and add the college and university to their common app account. They work on editing their essays, which are college and supplemental essays. And they will start gathering recommendation letters from two subject teachers and one from a counselor. And they begin to fill out CSS and the FAFSA financial aid forms. And finally, they need to figure out whether to apply for early decision or regular decision. So what are early decision and regular decision? So first, early decision is a type of application for high achiever students with excellent academic records and sufficient extracurricular activities. Some of the characteristics are the deadlines are on November 1st and November 15th of each year. And here competition is very, very tough. Also the probability of getting good scholarship is high. And most colleges and universities to apply here are the ones located in the Ivy League, such as Columbia University, 
or other universities such as UBC, which is located in Canada. For the regular decision, this type of uh, decision is uh, taken by a student who wants to apply later on the year. And here, of course, the deadline uh, comes later on the year, which is between December to end of February. And here, competition and probability of getting full scholarship are relatively lower. So what are the required materials for college application? First is complete high school transcript. Second is SAT or TOEFL official score reports. Next one is two recommendation letters from subject teachers and one from a counselor, followed by essays, which are supplemental and college. And next, they need financial aid forms, which are the CSS and FAFSA. And the difference between the two forms is CSS is for international students, while the FAFSA is students with US citizenship only. And if they are required by a school, students can provide additional materials. So now let's go to scholarship. What are scholarships? Scholarships are awards given for a student for excellent academic performance, as well as fulfilling other needed requirements. And there are two types of scholarship, which are merit-based and need-based. And merit-based is an award based on student's academic performance mainly, while the need-based is given after verification of the student's inability to cover college costs. And for full scholarship, 100% of the cost is covered in the award. Meanwhile, for the partial scholarship, only a percentage of the total cost is covered in the award. So the final stage of the application process is, for the ED applicants, their decision starts coming beginning the first week of December. Meanwhile, for regular decisions, the decision starts arriving somewhere between mid-March to end of June, mostly. So, if a student gets accepted, he or she must reply his or her offer letters and go through F1 and visa application process. And finally, they need to pay a deposit fee. So, now let's look at the Ethiopian University application process. For this one, students need to fill out a form by the end of their senior year and the form requires them to list 45 governmental universities from most to least preferred. The form also requires them to list their choices of fields accordingly, and based on point system, students will be admitted to their preferred universities and fields. So here, higher point means better chance. If a student can make a cutoff point, he or she has the choice of attending a private college or university in different parts of the region. Now, let's look at the proficiency test, the SAT and TOEFL. First, SAT means scholastic aptitude test. And this test is based on English writing, reading, and math skills. And this is required by most colleges in the USA and Canada. And it is graded out of total score of 1,600, so 800 for English and 800 for maths. If it's required by institutions, students write SAT2, which is a subject-based test. The higher the SAT score means a greater chance of getting a full or partial scholarship. And there are six to eight test days throughout each year. And students register for this test via collegeboard.com with a $90 registration fee. Next, TOEFL. This stands for Test of English as a Foreign Language. And this is an English test taken by students speaking English as their second language. And the test assesses reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills. And the test is graded out of 120 total points, so 30 points for each skill. And here, few US institutions, but majority of the institutions in other parts of the world require it. And students have to register 
for this test via online with a registration fee. Fourth, the value of extracurricular activities. What are extracurricular activities? And these are a non-academic task done in a school or in a community. And most institutions require this form from a student to evaluate their all-roundedness. And students are expected to list them under the list of college and university supplemental essays to help them increase their chances of getting accepted to a college or university. And these are expected to contribute to a student's public speaking skills, confidence level, leadership skill, problem solving skill, and to see life across non-academic boundaries. And students must keep all the certificates they are awarded from the school club or from a community volunteer groups with them. Number five, the role of college guidance counselor. Here are the roles of the counselor. Number one, to provide counseling for all students with personal concerns. Number two, to provide academic counseling for students. Number three, to provide informational service for students and parents. Number four, to assist students with college and university applications. Number five, to serve as a consultant to parents of assigned students. And number six, to collaborate with and serve as a resource person to faculty and administration. I've wrapped up my presentation. Thank you very much for having your attention.